Namaste everyone. How are you? My name is Shubham Alok. I am here with a new topic today and this is related to Dasha. So, in Vedic Astrology, we first find the promise. You know, things which are promised in the horoscope. And then we go on to check the Dasha Antar Dasha when the desired result is supposed to happen. The basic of Dasha is very simple. Whatever a planet promises, that result comes to pass in the Dasha Antar Dasha of the planet. Now, rather than being simple, it is also difficult at the same point of time. Because to know the promise of the planet, whatever a planet has promised in the horoscope is a Herculean task. And everything, Rashi position of planet, house position of planet, aspects of planet, divisional chart position of planet, all of these things constitute the single factor, which is the promise of planet. Right? So it is somehow very difficult to judge also. But that's never an issue. It can be done. Right? If one is fluent with astrology, they will be able to know these things without much hurdle. Now, the thing that I specifically want to talk about, it is a very serious, very genuine and a very legitimate query. You know what? I have researched a lot of dashas. And when I say research, it is not like I have found some dasha written in a book and start writing it. Or I follow some astrologer, he have told about something, I copy it and try to present it in my name. This is not what I call a research. My old students know very well that I have done many researches. I have made my own dashas. You know, Shubha Malok dashas, what I call them. These dashas are written nowhere, hinted nowhere, not by any astrologer, not by any classic, not in any book. These are made by myself. I have carefully formatted them, made them, structured them and used them. In courses, I also teach it to my students and it is not only dashas. I have my own method of astrological calculations, my own method of making divisional charts, many things of my own that I keep on revealing in different courses, etc. Et but what was the need for it? I ask you a query. Suppose there is a person. He is now 40 years old. He got married at a point of time. Say when he got married, the Dasha Antar Dasha was connected to the seventh house. This made him get married. Okay. Now that Dasha Antar Dasha will be over. So his spouse will disappear. Does it happen this way? No. It will not disappear. Now this person had child at the age of, say, 29. When childbirth happened, some dasha antar dasha were supporting the fifth house. So childbirth happened. But that dasha antar dasha set will get over. Now this child will still remain in life, right? Suddenly the child will not disappear at any given point of time. So how do you deal with such issues? A particular dasha antar dasha gives you something. Then that dasha antar dasha is over. But after that dasha antar dasha is over, how do you judge the result? There are many answers to it. Classics also recommend you something on this. But this is not very, very satisfactory, to be very honest. It is not very satisfactory. This is the basic point where the rule of making a particular house as ascendant comes into play. But this is a very feeble rule. And if anyone have done real researches on horoscopes, have predicted on horoscopes, 
right there are people who make normal predictions that you will be happy in life and then consider themselves as the greatest astrologer the world have ever seen in the last 5000 centuries that is a different scenario <laughs> if someone have really worked on the horoscope then they will know how it is done and it is somehow difficult you know what i was talking to my wife some other day a friend of her mother is going to fall ill she predicted in 2019 that around in 2022 23 health problem will occur and when this lady gave horoscope to her she haven't even told that this is my horoscope and i was so astonished to find how brilliantly she have done it and not many astrologers can do it right doing this is very difficult very very difficult it is not easy a task but i have devised some methods using which you can make it easy right so today we are going to talk of the same thing. for this purpose we will take the most popular vimshottri dasha see vimshottri dasha is popular so you know it some how as a teacher i think sometimes that it becomes my responsibility to also teach people about what is already popular or what is already much in use so keeping that in mind this gives me an excuse to not reveal the original thing but however whatever i am talking about is more than 95% accurate you have to use it to believe it and this have been my backbone of prediction since long this particular thing that i am going to talk about the logic is pretty simple if you want to judge the result related to seventh house start the dasha from the nakshatra where the seventh lord is situated in simple right so say seventh lord is jupiter that is situated in uttarashad so you see how which degree in uttara shaadha jupiter is situated in the degree he have crossed that will be the bhogi dasha dasha already passed before birth the degrees that he have to cross that will be bhukta dasha so that will be bhogi dasha the person still have to go through right this is the basic point it can be very easily done taking the help of the software jagannath hora at this free software so what you do i will show you the settings be very careful about it you open this particular horoscope suppose this is a horoscope you go to dasha you find vimshottri dasha in this vimshottri dasha you check at options now you will have nakshatra dasha starting point here suppose i want to see the see about his profession this is what i call a timeline i want to see the professional timeline of the native you know the normal vimshottri the normal vimshottri is more like it tells you at this 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 particular point major events related to these 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 houses will happen you can make a flow chart based on it but not a timeline suppose i have to do a 10 year analysis of only profession and making a timeline of professional life where it goes up when it goes down when it gives more money when it takes more effort etc for this what i will do i check i see in this horoscope 10th lord is venus because libra is in the 10th house so i will select nakshatra dasha starting point as shukra's futa venus 
So as per the nakshatra which is occupied by Venus in this horoscope, Venus occupies Ashwini nakshatra. As per the nakshatra of Venus, it will be started. And you see the dasha starts from Ketu. Vimshotri dasha starts from Ketu because Venus is an Ashwani nakshatra. And in Vimshotri dasha, Ashwini is ruled by Ketu. Now looking at this particular format of, or rather say looking at this particular variation of Vimshotri Dasha, I will be able to make a professional timeline for this native. When the time is good for profession, when the time is bad for profession, etc, etc. Right, this is what I can do. And to do this, to achieve this particular thing, I am going to share the four major techniques related to Dasha I am going to share here. This can be normally applied to any Dasha, specifically Dashas like Vimshotri, which is Nakshatra based. And specifically can be used with this particular variation, which I am teaching in this particular video. One thing you understand, major classics are of the opinion that for the judgment of a particular house, that house should be made as an ascendant and the result should be read accordingly. So 10th house we are going to judge, 10th house was Libra in the horoscope that we saw. What we do, we take Libra to be the ascendant and start reading the results therefrom. Now, how to read the result? There are four particular principles that I will want to talk about. But before that, always remember what I am saying. This is the first technique. Make Libra as the ascendant. From that particular position, you see the Raj Yogas, you see the Dhana Yogas. Connection between first house, second house, 11th house, 5th house and 9th house makes a Dhana Yoga. Dhana Yoga indicate gain. So for the 10th house, it indicates gains through profession. When you are looking at 7th house, it indicates gains through marriage. When you are looking at 5th house, it indicates gains through children, etc. Then you have to check the Raj Yogas. Connection between first house, fourth house, tenth house, fifth house, and ninth house is Raj Yoga. Raj Yoga gives name, fame, prestige, owner, power, makes the life easy, makes the person influential, and get up to a higher standards and higher ranks in society. So the first thing that you have to do, and I will take an example after I have clearly explained it. The thing that you will do is you will judge the Raja Yogas and the Dhana Yogas. You will make, mark the planet who are making the Raja Yogas and the Dhana Yogas and will predict accordingly. Okay. So let me illustrate this particular one. Taking the same horoscope into consideration, I move this horoscope from Libra. Okay. Now read the horoscope. Now in this chart, see for Rahu Ketu, I have already talked into a video. Rahu Ketu give result according to the planet conjoined with them. If there is no planet in conjunction, then they give result according to the planet aspecting them. And if there is no planet aspecting, then they give result according to the Rashi law. If there are more than one conjuncting planet or more than one aspecting planet, then you have to take the strongest one. A strong planet, more influence. Simple panda. Ketu is aspected by Mars Venus. In this Mars is into a friendly sign, Venus is into a neutral sign, Mars is more powerful. Ketu gives result like Mars, Mars is the lord of the seventh house and second house. My simple remark will be Ketu Dasha, professional financial gain will be there through profession because of the connection over the second house. 
but mars being the seventh lord there will be a lot of lack of settlement lots of movement and person not getting that particular thing which he is struggling for will be my remark for ketu dasha then i will come to venus dasha venus is the lagna lord eighth house lord situated in the seventh house aspecting the lagna aspecting the lagna makes the lagna strong venus dasha i will say professionally very good but because it is the eighth lord in the seventh house aspecting the ascendant as well eighth house being a bad house i will say this is the time when the person is not able to devote much time to his professional life and there are many health issues and personal problems coming which are disturbing his professional life next dasha will be of sun and we see this sun is the 11th lord in the 8th house aspecting the second house conjoined with the 9th lord and 12th lord 11th lord 12th lord connection whatever gains he is getting through profession is getting uh, uh, is getting destroyed because of expenditure 11th lord in 8th house this person is spending his um, spending maximum amount of his money that he have earned in paying loans or into fixed deposit etc <clears throat> 9th lord 11th lord conjunction but at the same point of time this person is quite fortunate in getting the quite fortunate in earning money through profession and actually he is earning more than what he deserves next dasha will be of moon that is the 10th lord in the 6th house this is an ukchaya ukchaya connection this is a time for much professional growth advancement promotions rise in income etc etc rise in income also because this moon is conjoined with the second lord mars as well right but it comes with professional instability change of many jobs change of places etc because of the conjunction of jupiter as well and because this moon is in the 6th house i will always make a remark that in this particular dasha antar dasha person is working under much pressure and he is in pressure to do things quickly achieve things quickly not forgetting what the previous dasha has promised you know what this is a very major rule if the previous dasha have told something as like i have said for the sun dasha that this person maximum of his money will be spent in paying loans etc i cannot forget right so under pressure in moon dasha is also going in tune keeping in mind what we predicted for the previous dasha that is the person is paying a lot of loads this should not be forgotten the classics of astrology are very clear that if there is a bad dasha followed by a good dasha followed by another bad dasha because this good dasha is surrounded by two bad dashas result of good dasha will be compromised and if there is a good dasha bad dasha followed by good dasha because this good dasha because this bad dasha is having good dasha before and after the bad results are compromised and good results will happen only <clears throat> right so this is the basic point you make that particular rashi as ascendant and read the combinations and the result of planet in houses as you generally do for an ascendant just keep in mind that this particular dasha is for a particular house and whatever result we are going to predict is related to that particular house only this way we will be able to make a timeline related to that particular house and that timeline will help us a lot will help us greatly let me ask you a question or let me tell you a particular thing see because i am an astrologer who looks at horoscope i know about it you take 30 hours and check when the person got married how many of them were having a direct connection of dasha antar dasha lord with the seventh house you will find less than 30% of the horoscopes were having a direct connection with the sixth house until and unless you start pulling the year to make it a trunk 
and saying that 9th 7000 from ascendant 7000 from moon 7000 from venus 7000 t9 lagna of t9 venus of t9 moon of t9 any of them can be activated at the time of marriage then in that particular scenario it is very easy to formulate such a funda and do a post mortem taking some past taking some horoscopes where the event have already happened in past but it is very difficult to predict future and those who have endeavored to predict know this otherwise i will not be teaching many of the teachers of these institutions right however coming back to my point you know this is the crux the particular technique that i am teaching you this is the crux right use this particular thing start the dasha from the nakshatra occupied by the seventh lord make the seventh house as ascendant and the planet making good connection no matter whichever house he is situated in if the planet is making good connection he can give you marriage without any doubt and as i have already told you vimshotri dasha normal vimshotri is more like indicative you can say this time these things are probably will happen right it talks about the things the energies which are active at the present but it cannot provide you a timeline this particular technique can provide you a timeline and timelines are very important for progress in future and to make maximum use of astrology those who have used astrology for their advancements my students and my clients they know the importance of the timelines that i provide them in fact 2014 to 2018 i think i used to have a special consultation on my website where i used to provide people with timelines related to the houses they were more interested in coming to the second technique first house fifth house ninth house fourth house eighth house twelfth house these houses are very important if there is a malefic in first house fifth house and ninth house in the dasha antar dasha of that malefic progress related to the house in which they are situated in 1592 progress related to that house is hindered whereas if there are benefits in 159 house from the house under consideration then in the dasha antar dasha of these benefits the progress is increased the progress related to that house is there blessings related to that house is there prosperity related to that house is there now in this particular case we are talking of both natural benefits natural benefits and functional benefits also and there should be no confusion this is a general question sir if jupiter is the eighth lord uh, if jupiter is the eighth lord and is is exalted what will happen so result of eighth house disease will also be greatly present cheating will also be greatly present mental maladies will also be greatly present right because these are the negative significations of the 8th house but that does not mean that the positive result of jupiter that is ethics children prosperity knowledge these things will not happen that's not the case these things will also happen so keep this very clear into your mind that the house that the result of the planet and the result of the house are nowhere contradictory maximum i can say is many people will say eighth house lord also indicate loss of money but if the eighth house lord is jupiter because jupiter indicates prosperity you cannot predict loss of money if the eighth lord is jupiter but for that scenario jupiter have to be powerful also if jupiter is weak then taking the same factor that jupiter is the karka for prosperity and jupiter is weak and afflicted we can say that prosperity will go right so there should be no confusion regarding that coming to technique 2.2 the second part of the second technique planets in the 4th 8th and 12th house denote the happiness from the particular house under consideration so if there are malefics in 4 8 12 in the dasha antar dasha of the malefic happiness contentment satisfaction related to that house is under problem person is tensed related to the future prospects of that house whereas if there are benefits in 4 8 12 from a house 
then in the particular dasha antar dasha person gets the sense of security serenity and gets the sense of that everything will happen well related to that particular house under consideration for an example in the same horoscope suppose i have to judge the result of the seventh house the seventh lord is moon itself so the dasha have to be started from moon janmatara moon starting the dasha from moon and moving the horoscope from the moon sign sorry moving the horoscope from the sign cancer jupiter moon and mars are situated in the ninth house jupiter which is a naturally benefic ninth lord in the ninth house sixth lord in the ninth house i will say in the dasha antar dasha of jupiter blessings and prosperity related to the seventh house will be there however because jupiter is the sixth lord some fight and struggles can also be told moon being in the ninth house lagna lord in ninth house in the dasha antar dasha of moon much prosperity related to the seventh house will be have will be there marital life will be very good because mars is also in the ninth house that is the lord of the 10th house and the 5th house in the horoscope in the dasha antar dasha of mars success related to marriage 10th lord gains related to marriage 5th lord will be there however this success and gain will not be without without fights and frictions in marital life because that is the natural signification of mars in the dasha of ketu because it is situated in the fourth house from the seventh house and this is a malefic i will say the happiness and the you know sense of having everything under control will be challenged in the dasha of ketu and in the dasha of saturn which is the seventh lord and the eighth lord in the eighth house extremely negative in the antar dasha antar dasha of saturn the you know the, this this uh, satisfaction related to the seventh house happiness related to the seventh house the sense of having everything under control related to the seventh house will be under problem and the person will be surrounded by depressing ideas self doubt etc right so this is this was the second technique the third technique is and this is a very prime and a very important technique what is the vast dasha the vast dasha is of the enemy of the lagna lord the vast dasha is the dasha of the enemy of lagna lord and the best dasha is of the friend of the lagna lord right neutral dashas are neutral so the third point is suppose you are going you are checking the fifth house you check the dasha from the fifth house the fifth lord in this particular horoscope is venus option starting the dasha from the venus nakshatra now venus saturn mercury are mutually friends venus saturn mercury dasha will be good even if these dashas are otherwise bad using the previous two fundas extreme bad will not happen things will be under control misery and the bad results will only happen up to that extent which the person can easily manage right this is generally used for the modification of result right and specifically in the dasha of set in the dasha of sun moon and jupiter which are inimical to the fifth lord venus bad results will happen even if by the previous two rules if jupiter moon and uh, sun dasha is good even in that scenario despite the good things happening the person will not be able to completely enjoy the good results right that is a basic point even if good result happens in the dasha of the enemy of lagna lord you cannot enjoy the good result completely because of one or the other situation and even if bad results are promised by the friend of the lagna lord that bad is never bad up to that extent which you cannot handle or which you cannot go through right so this was the third technique now coming to the fourth technique this fourth technique is again very very simple this is a very basic dasha rule 
that basic dasha rule is benefic planets are good in 159 houses fourth house first house fifth house ninth house benefics are good second house also benefics are good third sixth house malefics are good 10th 11th house every planet is good 12th house and 8th house see people say people not people classics of pain that 12th house and 8th house malefics are good you have to understand you you can say that saturn is good in the 12th house because person will not be lazy right 12th house indicates what you lose expenditure so lethargy you know delaying things to do tomorrow hard work these particular things are gone destroyed because of saturn being in the 12th house but saturn being the significator of profession and saturn being the significator for you know success also saturn being the significator of people who follow you when it goes to the 12th house these things also take a hit and there are not many people to follow you even if you have followers at one day or another they becomes your enemy you know they go against you these things also come into play right so this is a dual edged sword you cannot say it is completely good or you cannot say it is completely bad see you cannot blindly believe on what classics is say when we learn into the parampara because i myself belong to a tradition you know the basic rules you know how the building blocks of astrology work and once understood that you judge every rule and everything in the light of the basic principles right one building have to stand on four pillars that is very basic you cannot tell me that i you cannot tell me or convince me that i will stand a rectangular figure over two pillars that you, better you don't do otherwise the person living on the first floor will be in problem right so this is the basic point good and bad houses of the planet and here the good planet and the bad planet that we are talking about is the natural nature of planet where saturn mars sun rahu ketu becomes malefic and moon venus mercury and jupiter become benefic so based on the house placement also the result of the shan pratisha have to be judged and it should be predicted accordingly if you keep these four rules in mind and i tell this to my students i should also tell this to you you should not test it come on i have tested it for you you just have to clearly understand it make notes understand what i am saying and apply it into the horoscope you don't need to test it i have tested it for you don't worry this particular tip that i have shared related to dasha antar dasha is a game changer many things which were which are difficult to predict using dasha antar dasha many areas where the astrologers struggle related to dasha antar dasha can be made extremely easy just by using this simple particular technique that i have taught in this video and for practicing astrologers for those who really know astrology and for those who look at horoscopes and for my students this video and this particular technique will prove to be a boon i am very sure about it this technique i have you know when i used to take private classes this techniques i have taught to many of the students and many of them have progressed very well in astrology many of them having their separate practices now right so this is a boon this is a revolutionary technique you just have to understand it properly and start using it in your own practice thank you for watching the video have a good